Okay, we do have a great question to kick it off with. Uh, it's a question from Gail. It says, I'm transitioning to retirement in the next few years. Oh, congratulations. What are the most important things to think about? Mm. Yeah, man, this one is this one is really interesting. And this is one we get a lot because everybody, they dream about retirement. Retirement is this thing that we look to the future and it's this amazing thing. And we have this goal that one day I'm going to retire. One day I'm going to do this thing. But since we're only going to likely do it one time and we want it to be pretty special, we want to make sure we're doing the things on the front end to make sure it's successful because the last thing we want is to work for our entire career and get to retirement and it turns out to be something less than what we thought it was. And unfortunately, we've seen this happen a little bit because we're going to kind of talk through, okay, what are some of the things that you ought to think about? But I think just on a high level, kind of zooming out a little bit, Obviously, there's the mathematics. Obviously, there's the knowing your number and walking through that kind of stuff. But one of the things that I tell people is the biggest thing that you need to figure out as you're thinking about retirement, as you're thinking about financial independence, as you're transitioning to that stage of life is don't just understand what you're retiring from. I'm getting away from the nine to five. I'm getting away from that boss. I'm getting away from those colleagues. I'm getting away from whatever that thing is, but really have a laser clear idea of what is it I'm retiring to? Because it's that thing that you are retiring to that is going to give you the staying power in retirement to actually be able to enjoy what you're doing. Because what you don't want to do is wake up. Uh, I mean, first week of retirement is pretty easy. Wake up in week two and look around and say, holy cow, now what do I do? I spent the last 40 years clocking in and clocking out and being a widget maker. Now that I'm not a widget maker, who am I? What do I value? What do I want to do? So I think the very first thing that you can think about or that you can do is begin to think about not only what am I leaving, but what am I moving towards? And is that, in fact, something I actually want to be moving towards? Yeah, I think a, a good, if you want to give yourself a, a, a quick shot of knowing all the variables and how to kind of plan for this, go to moneyguy.com slash resources. We do have a great resource to help you prepare for retirement. But um, I'll go ahead and tell you one of the biggest things I think is you have to take inventory. Okay. Um, so, if, you know, like all good things for a teacher to provide you, you've got to have some homework you know, to even know what you spend, you know, look, it's great. I get it. Maybe at the beginning of your journey, you had to do budgeting and you got into a comfortable place where you're on an automatic investment plan. So you didn't have to do budgeting anymore. But now as you're approaching retirement, you might have to dust off the old budgeting chops mm -hmm. to kind of know what you actually spend, because that's going to get drive a lot of the financial decisions going forward. Also take inventory. What are your income sources? Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about just like pensions or the assets that you're going to have to pull off of every year with your all your retirement accounts. I'm talking about like Social Security. Sure. Have you gone and figured out what Social Security is probably going to pay you at what age and figure out when and how you're going to take that? What are your health insurance premiums mm -hmm. going to be? Yep. When do you transition to Medicare? Are you going to do the supplements? There's a lot of things that are going to go into all that. And then what are your happiness goals? You know, Bo kind of just, he previewed it in the fact that he was talking about what are you actually retiring to? I think a lot of people need to quickly understand you need to figure out, hey, what do I enjoy doing mm -hmm. with my time? What brings me purpose? What relationships do I think I'll get to keep after I leave the yep. workplace environment? And then make sure you're nurturing all those important things. And then that leads to, and, and Bo, I'll leave some meat on the bone for this, is that I think a, a stress test is important. I think putting on your 3D glasses and maybe even taking the relationship to the next level. What would you add? Yeah, I, I love that because one of the things that we see, and this is what we see across people that maybe don't do this quite as successful is they have unrealistic expectations. Uh, and this is what I mean. We'll ask some people, hey, what do you spend, what do you think you're going to spend in retirement? And they'll say, oh, $5,000 a month. And we're like, whoa, whoa, okay, hold on, time out, time out, time out. We know how much money you make right now. We know how much you save right now. We know how much you pay in taxes. And so the difference in those three numbers is probably what you're spending right now. And you mean to tell me that when you leave the workforce and you no longer have eight hours of your day occupied by work, the thing you're going to do those eight hours aren't going to cost money. You're not going to, and they go into it thinking, hey, I'm only going to spend 5000 Realistically, they get to retirement and all of a sudden, month one, two, three, they're spending seven, eight, nine thousand dollars $9,000 a month or whatever that number may be. You have to have realistic expectations. And one of the ways that you can do that early on is start actually preparing for retirement by ad-libbing what retirement's going to look like. Try to spend pre-retirement the exact same way that you spend now. Another thing that you can do that can set you up for success, and this is exactly what you were saying, Brian, is this might be the time that it makes sense to take the relation to the next level because 
likely you only have one retirement. But when you work with a financial advisor, an advisory team that's worked through hundreds of retirements, they've seen the pitfalls, they've seen the success stories, and they can actually walk you through, hey, here's what's realistic about your plan. Yeah, I think this spending makes sense, but maybe you can't buy the beach house and then buy the sailboat and then travel the world and then do this thing. And they can actually put some parameters around what retirement actually could look like or if you want retirement to look like that, what steps are required today over the next 12, 24, 60, 120 months to be able to get to what that vision for the future you have truly is? You know, the big takeaway for me is, once again, planning, mm-hmm. preparation, doing your homework. You know, look, I think building financial independence can be one of the most fulfilling things because it's, it's something about waking up in the morning, having purpose, but also knowing that all the fruit, you know, all the, the 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 sacrifice and the discipline of the early years is now bearing fruit of your best financial mm-hmm. life. That's pretty fulfilling. Yep. But just make sure you're not skipping steps because that's the that's the part that I see a lot of people they just let life happen. We've given you the resources. Please take us up on going to moneyguy.com/resources. Tons of free stuff getting your head start, accelerating your success so you can eventually reach that abundant cycle goal.